welcome back to Engineer's Workshop, uh, day 76 in the war in Ukraine. So I don't have a whole lot for you other than a, a, an update. I'm going to bring up the date with where we're at with a couple of the machines. And I'm going to take you on a just kind of a handheld walk around because, spoiler alert, I've got a new piece of equipment coming. Uh, completely unexpected, but I've got to make sure I have uh, means to offload this and a little bit of space for it because unfortunately the area under my overhead hoist with the 25 foot beam is all taken up by existing equipment and the body of my son's Spitfire. So I've got to come up with another way of getting a, about a 4,000 pound piece of equipment off of a trailer. So let me uh, grab the camera, take you on a walk around around the shop, and bring you up to date on what. Let's start off with the 1974 Ford F-350. Ford F-350 is going away. It is actually already sold. Really kills me to do this after getting the truck for next to nothing and putting on six new tires and four brand new uh, one-piece rims for the back, dualies, and new brakes, uh, brake lines, all new front suspension bushings, Oh boy, what else? Uh, got the radiator soldered and fixed. Just all kinds of you know preparatory work for making this uh, really cool work truck and the timing chain jumped. So put the engine out of commission and it was gonna become more of a long-term project and just came to the regretful decision that it's time to shed this and send it off to a good home. So my buddy Heath ended up buying it Keith is the one who owns the Acroturn lathe, so I've prepped this by putting all the original tires in the back, and uh, Heath can take it off to his place to sit beside its big brother, the 1964 F800, which will also be moving. Heath's got a place out in the country with lots of room to store vehicles, and he's going to start a regular old stable of trucks to restore. Still have some massive oak slabs here in storage three and four inches thick. Some of these things are pretty close to 60 inches wide and 12 to 13 feet long would make some really, really nice conference tables. Unchanged on the 1963 Thunderbird. That's my son's vehicle. This is kind of a long-term project. Long-term in the future, that is. Got the Fay and Egan um, eight-inch joiner which <laughs> despite being a little bit rusty, really, really works well. And so I've been regularly taking an edge off of uh, boards with this. Just rigged up a very makeshift uh, motor here. Uses uh, gravity to tension the belt. And I oil up the Babbitt bearings and away I go. The Quincy, you can see the pressure gauge is down at zero. Quincy's out of commission because somehow I let the magic smoke out of the motor and it was just running just fine. I don't know what happened all of a sudden, but uh, one day the motor decided it was not going to work anymore and uh, I've got to swap that out. I've got another five horse motor. It's a steel, just a pressed steel motor, so it doesn't look nearly as cool, but got to get that back up and running. The Marshke grinder, use occasionally and need to dress the wheels. Uh, despite this thing weighing a thousand pounds, the wheels being slightly out of balance will make it vibrate a bit, so those need a good dressing to uh, bring them into true. Here's a neat little piece of woodworking equipment, a uh, Rockwell Delta half-inch uh, spindle shaper, and I outfitted it with a retrofit, it's an ER20 collet, which will take up to half-inch uh, router bits, but because of the height of this thing, the table really needs to be higher because that's that's with the bit all the way down and you see I can't even get it below the surface of the um, of the table. If I were to um, elevate this, you know going between two inches above the table and flush really doesn't do a whole lot of good. So uh, I use this to put a profile on some picture frame molding. I think I might have a quick video clip of that. Just 
just a pretty neat little piece of equipment to uh, run trim for the house on. And the big news, the AcraTurn lathe is now running. You saw in the last video, did a quick project um, uh, turning to, uh, some brass to just clean up and freshen up the OD. I got a new T-wrench for the chuck, and this turned out to be a uh, 7 16 chuck, and I got the T-wrench, and it does not want to go in there. I, I mean, I checked this with the calipers, and it is smaller, and then it dawned on me, when you look at this, perfectly sharp edges, very much rounded edges here. So I've got to turn the corners off of this, but I can't get it off of the handle so I'm going to very carefully put it in the chuck maybe I'm going to tape the handle up against the jaws and then uh, turn the swaging off of the off of the uh, end of the handle so I can slip it off and I can put this in the chuck and turn those corners off until it fits. Let's see what I can tie this back with. I think if I keep the RPMs low, I'll be okay. That should work. Now on my hand wheel here, I'm in contact with the shank there at about 75,000 so I'm going to back off two turns and then uh, creep up on this and uh, slowly feed it down until the swage end is gone. That's enough clearance to get me past it. Come in until we make contact. The whole lathe is shaking a little bit just from that little bit of imbalance. Well, it's doing what I want. A little bit more to go. should be enough for it to come off as it continued up the shank. Well, a tiny bit more. Okay, corner to corner. We're at about 555. And across the points of this, we're about at 595. So if I come in until I touch, take a reference, that thing's really running out. This chuck key is so wonky, and I can't get it zeroed perfectly uh, with a three-jaw vise, but I've got it close within, a, let's, let's say, ten thousandths 
peak to peak. So I'm going to turn the peaks until I'm touching them all, then take a reading across the peaks and compare it to um, what, what the chuck key recess is, the chamfers in the corners, and go until I'm just a little bit undersized on that, and then I'll do a test fit. Feeding in another ten thousandths. Almost hitting all four. On the diagonal, I'm at 0.555, and across the points, I'm at about 0.590. So I need to come down about 40 thousandths from where I'm at. So that's 20 thousandths on the radius. Must be some spring in something, because I need to keep going with it. There we go. And as an added bonus, the chuck also fits the Gibbs screws on the joiner. So I have a way of loosening those Gibbs screws. Probably gonna have to put a little cheater bar on there, but uh, those are 7 16 square slots as well. The big Quincy is still taking up valuable space in the middle of the shop. I'd like to get this parked a little bit closer over to the uh, side of the building so that I could get the tractor back and forth. Unfortunately, to move it, I've got to get it to hop over some various chunks of steel in the floor. And this thing's heavy. I mean, this thing weighs probably 2,500 pounds, so it's not like you could... Uh, I wish I had a pallet jack, then I could probably move it, but I don't. And really, this thing should probably go to a good home. Somebody with a need for, you know, a 20 horsepower uh, screw air compressor. Someone who does a lot of sandblasting. Because it was really a beautifully kept um, and maintained process air compressor. And those screw compressors, they, they basically just don't wear because there's really no contact of uh, metal parts. It rides on an oil film. K&T is in its little insulating hut. And in front of it, we've got the Cincinnati tool and cutter grinder, currently kind of in a state of storage while I get the auxiliary table reattached. Then I can get things indicated and get the gib shimmed up and uh, start putting this thing to use. Really, really nice Mitotoyo um, five-digit um, DRO with uh, one axis here on the in and out. Sun Spitfire, body is still slung up under the hoist. We did a test fit of the chassis. And the chassis is here. He stripped all the parts off of it. And you can see where he grafted on the front end from uh, a different, well, I think it was the same model Spitfire, probably slightly different year. But uh, his were all mangled up on the front end, and this one was in good shape. So he's going to powder coat this, have it sandblasted and powder coat it. Been drilling the occasional hole with the the old uh, Barnes drill press, which is just so cool to operate. And the Monarch lathe, sadly just sitting, waiting for restoration. And all its parts back here, growing a, coast, a coat of rust. I've got to get, uh, I've got to get this back in process, get everything painted up and uh, get this lathe back together. I like using Heath's, but I'd really like to use the Monarch more. 
And the Skinner steam engine is also occupying a space under the hoist. So um, if I want to get anything else unloaded, I'm going to have to get a couple of these items moved out of the way. My son has the engine and transmission slung up just to one of the building supports. This is probably what I'm going to end up doing, uh, hanging a chain fall or uh, my chain uh, come along to the building and using it to hoist and put it, bring a new piece of equipment off the trailer. Got uh, three painting, well, two painting cabinets and another metal cabinet. Kind of ugly, but solid. This one has two shelves and uh, paint cabinets. I have a total of seven shelves. So I can have four shelves in one and three in the other. These are nice and uh, spacious. So this will hold a lot of tooling. Put a uh, heat source in the bottom, like a light bulb. And keep everything from uh, rusting and also these are lockable with a little bit of ingenuity. Heavy to move though. Got a pretty massive gas uh, unit heater here. Kind of you see uh, hanging by threaded rods up near the ceiling. So if I get propane uh, nozzles for it, I could put some heat into this shop. But with uh, this big opening and these openings and that opening, you know, I got to get this place enclosed so that I could uh, stop the dirt and filth from blowing in here and be able to get uh, a little bit of either heat or air conditioning in here when I want to work. This is an antenna mast, about 40 feet tall overall. I'm going to end up erecting this here at this lot because at this building I can get Xfinity cable. I cannot get cable at the house where I work most of the most of the days of the week. And uh, Comcast Business wanted twenty-one thousand dollars to install cable to the house. I can get Xfinity installed for free here at the building, and then uh, I don't have clear line of sight. But if I get the antennas up and I go in this direction, the house is about fifteen hundred feet through those trees. So if I can shoot a signal over the top of those trees with the antenna, with uh, Cambium Network, um, they're like five gigahertz transponders, I can beam the internet to the house and uh, not have a physical cable at that address. So I've already proved out the Cambium Network devices running a makeshift internet at the, at the house. What I have is a uh, AT&T hotspot as the modem and the modem connects to a router in my little barn and the cambium network then beam the internet signal to the house which is about 300 feet away and then the uh, internet is dispersed through the house with another uh, router acting as an access point so I'm proving out the system before I bring it over here and erect the antenna, but uh, basically everything seems to work pretty reliably. I don't have any dropouts. Uh, so when it, uh, everything's proved out, I will erect the antenna here, another one at the barn, and then I'll connect internet to this building. It'll, it'll let me put up some security cameras to monitor the inside and the outside of this property and uh, get me a nice 200 megabit signal to the, uh, to the house. Well, I hope you enjoyed that quick update on uh, what's happening here at Engineer's Workshop. I will hope to be bringing you a little bit more machining content next time. We've got some projects stacking up, both for the Spitfire and for uh, other, other items that I've just got to make for the machines and other projects. So we'll be back with some machining content for you next time or possibly um, a new machine delivery. So catch us next time on Engineer's Workshop. Thanks once again so much for the all the subscriptions. Shares and likes really help the channel out. So uh, also check us out on Instagram at uh, Engineer's Workshop 1964. So until then, as always, stay safe.